my lovelies. You've come to WCT, Wishy Chick Tea. Bring me your kink, your drama, your tea, and your twisted entanglements. Y'all know your witchologist, Ave, is going to get you right with my personal intuition and that of my tarot cards. The emails y'all send be lit, and I always keep it real with you guys. What the cards reveal may not be what you want to hear, but it's what you need to hear. Some of these emails are crazy as hell, so if you offend easily, this channel ain't for you. Kink Drama T. You ask, I answer. Also, we'll be doing our weekly Zodiac readings. If you have a topic to discuss or need a reading, Email me at witchychicktea at gmail.com. Now, baby, let's dig into these emails. With my familiar big boy at my side, see what business is born up front. And then it's our weekly Zodiac readings. First up, we have, and I hope I pronounce this person's name correctly, Javon from Florida. Ave. I'm all for spicing up the bedroom, and I love my daddy. I knew right away when I met him that I had found the one. His tough, domineering demeanor and straight bad boy looks does it for me. He spanks me so good, and I have to admit, I'm a bit of a brat. Slap me, spank me, pull my hair, give me your piss. I love it all. But lately... He's turned things up a notch, and I'm not sure how I feel about the new king. He likes to call me his mutt. He brought ears, a muzzle, and a dog tail plug. Oh yeah, and a collar and leash. I tried it. It was okay, but a little demeaning. I mean, he had me barking as he walked me around the house on all fours. I guess the tail is kind of cute, but he brought another one that sticks to my skin. He puts that right above my ass when he's fucking me. Of late, he has me wearing the stuff more and more, and I only answer him in barks. Ave, I'm getting worried. Does this mean that I no longer please him? And does he really want to fuck a dog? Last week, he brought a dog house and put it in the backyard. Ave, I need help. I'm not feeling this, and I'm getting very concerned. I'm afraid to lose him. Do you have any advice? As you guys know, I'm all for kink. I'm all for kink. I'm all for spicing up the bedroom, whatever you want to call it. Uh, get your freak on, whatever. But the deal with the kink is that everybody has to be involved. Everybody has to be willing to participate and partake in this kink. If your kink is making someone else feel uncomfortable, then this is not something that's enjoying and it's not something that needs to continue. And if you're the one that's involved in the kink, and again, you're not feeling it. It's just not your thing. You have to be honest because there's nothing worse than putting yourself in a position that you have to do something you really don't want to do to please someone else. If you know within yourself that this just doesn't feel good to you, it doesn't feel right, you have to speak your piece and you have to open your mouth and tell it as it is. You have to. Because to sit there and, uh, and keep being part of something that's really causing you any kind of mental stress or spiritual stress, then that's just not cool at all. It's not cool. So you, Javon, Javon, I hope I said the name correctly, uh, you have to sit your person down and speak your truth. You have to. Now, as far as that doghouse, 
Uh, now, that's gone a little too far. I would have had some questions because um, when I saw that dog house, my thing would have been, who's going in there? Are, are you buying the dog? Because I know, <laughs> I know you don't think I'm going in there. No, baby. No. For me, it's a no. Uh, but if you want to go in that dog house, then, you know, you, 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 you do you. But for me, it, it's a hard no. And I, I, I would really have something to say. Don't bring anything else in this house that got anything to do with any kind of dog stuff because I'm really not with that. Uh, I am not going to be answering you in barks. Okay, um, that's not the language that I learned as a child. Um, I am not a dog, and I, I refuse to do this. Now, okay, granted, when you first brought home the kink, I tried to appease you. I tried to play along to see if this would be something that I like, and I don't, so we have to find something else. And if they're refusing to listen to your concerns, then you have to do some evaluating. Because that's not right. It's, it's not right at all. And uh, I would be concerned. Because, again, there's one thing of kink. And kink has many levels. But why the hell you buy a dog house? Like, okay, I can understand with the, the kink itself, the tails and the little ears or whatever. I understand. I, I know people do do that. But to go as far as buying a dog house and put that in the backyard... Uh, yeah, no, that's really concerning and, um, mm -mm. no, 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 that wouldn't be my thing. And I, I think you should have put your foot down then, but it's never too late. You need to speak your truth, speak your peace. Let's see what the cards have to say. The first card says new beginning. New beginnings. Now, again, that's not saying that you have to go and leave the person you're with. But you have to be true to yourself. And you have to be realistic with this. If this thing is not turning you on, if it's making you feel bad about yourself, if it's putting you in a bad place mentally, then you've got some decisions to make. You have some decisions to make because at the end of the day, this is your life. You understand? And you can't put yourself in a, a mental breakdown or uh, something like that because you're trying to appease somebody else. It just doesn't work like that. The second card says disappointment. Disappointment. Again, you're not feeling this. You're not feeling this. And you, you gotta be you, you gotta be honest. You have to be honest about it. And sorry to say, when you put your truth out there, that doesn't mean that the cards are gonna always fall in your direction. Maybe you're gonna realize something about this person that you never knew before. Maybe you're gonna see that, hey, this isn't the direction I need to go in. But you'll never know that until you confront the situation. And you have to confront it. Because if not, you're letting this bad energy build, build, build. You're already, you, you already stated you're not feeling it. You already said that you're concerned. So you've got these bad energies, these bad feelings rolling around inside of you. And that stuff is just building, building, building. And it's building into a big negative ball. And you need to do something before that, that balloon bursts. Because trust and believe, honey, sooner or later, it will. It will. And, and it's not going to be nothing nice. Okay? The last card says, abundance coming your way. Receive it. Again, I hate to tell anybody to leave anybody. But what that card is saying is that you have to be open mind. You have to be open mind. You have to tell your truth. You have to be stud fast in your truth. Stand strong in your truth. But you have to be willing to make the hard call if 
that's what happens. If that's what, what it ends up in, then you've got to be willing to make that hard call. Because if you don't, then you're going to sit in that pot of misery until it boils over. Okay? Up next is Kelly from New Jersey. Ave, I love my man. But the truth is, I'm not satisfied. He's a good one in the fact that he works and pays bills. But the sex is lacking. It was cool five years ago. But what I didn't know then was that he was taking little blue pills. Recently, the doctor told him to stop because it's messing with his liver. Now his dick play is about a few pumps and done. I don't even get a chance to get off. What am I supposed to do with his dish rag dick? It doesn't stay hard but a minute. I watch shows and hear my friends talk. A sister needs some relief. I understand that he can't take the pills due to his health. But had I known he was a no-show in the bed from jump, I wouldn't have pursued a relationship. I feel like I've been tricked. Bamboozled. I thought I had a man that would put it down and now I'm the one that's down. All the time. I've been faking orgasms to the sake of his pride. But that's getting old. My friends say I should try Tinder for those needs and keep him for all others. Is it wrong for me to take care of my needs since he can no longer get the job done? If I tell him, I'm sure I'll hurt his feelings. What do your cards have to say? Before I go into what the cards have to say, I want to say I'm getting very selfish vibes from this email and I got it from the day that I opened it up what you have to understand when you stated that you've been with this person for five years and obviously you didn't know they were taking the pills or whatever but the doctor stated that they have to stop taking them for their health and so your answer to that is let me go cheat It's a sad thing that we live in a world where love is replaced with sex. Love, human care, all of that is replaced with just sex. So, okay, because a person can dick you down or whatever the case may be, uh, does that necessarily mean that they love you or that they're any good for you? Because somebody can probably make the fucking bed shake, okay? But then when they get out of that bed, they could be cheating on you. They could be out there with all kinds of peoples. They got a big gambling problems. Don't pay the bill. So you throw all of that aside just for the fact of, okay, well, yeah, they can make my toes curl. To hell with them toes curling if you're going to wind up being homeless, if you're going to wind up getting some guy off of disease. Like, what the hell is the point? I don't get it. Personally, I don't get it. Call me what you will. I don't know. I, I, I don't get it. When sex is the answer for everything, I I just don't get it. I don't I don't get it. I get very selfish vibes from this email. Uh if your answer is that you're gonna go to tender to take care of your needs and uh and keep him for the bill paying and the rest of that, uh I, I think that's very jacked up. What I would suggest is why not go with him to his doctor. Sit there and explain some of your concerns too. Because, you know, they have all types of things. They have all types of, of stimulants and things of that nature. You can even go to a, a health store and find natural stimulants that can help. Why should it be okay they can't curl my toes anymore. I'm going to cheat. Why should that be the first answer? Whatever happened to, okay, my man or my woman can't do it. Let me try to see what else we can do. Maybe there's other things we can do in the bedroom. Maybe there's other uh, uh, things that he, that he or she can take. Let's talk to the doctor. Let's see what can happen. Instead of trying to work things out that way, oh, I'm going to run and cheat. Wow, that says a lot about your character. 
Let's go to the cards. The first card says lust. Boom. And it did, did is lust. That's it. End of the story. That's that's all that's happening here. The, if there's any real love, I don't know. I, I guess you need to call Charlie, Charlie Angels to come find it because it doesn't seem like there's any real love going on for me. I, I don't see it. I don't see it. The next card says whack. It actually says whack. W-A-C-K. Boom. I, I, I really don't know how, how much clearer you could be. Your concerns, your your wanting to run off to go and uh, cheat on this man because physically he can't do a certain thing. Medically, that's just that it's just terrible. It's just absolutely terrible. The last card says guidance, and that means you need some guidance. You need to really sit down and evaluate your relationship and evaluate your whole uh, response to this. Because it, it, it's just crazy. Like, I could even respect you more if you'd come and said, Ave, you know, this is happening. Do you know anything that we can do? You know, you, you guys know I don't deal in that spells and all that kind of shit. I don't go into that. Because I keep telling y'all about that, that Lord 3. What you put out there will be done, but it comes back. So I don't mess around and stuff like that. But just because I don't mess around and it don't mean I don't know how to do it. See, there's a difference. That's my choice of what I do and don't do. But there are natural, there's natural remedies to a lot of this stuff. And if you had come to me in that regards, look, I love my person, but medically they can't. Is the, Do you know anything? Do you have any advice? Boom, I could have led you down another road. But coming at me, talking about you're going to Tinder and the rest of that, like, wow. Wow. That just really, truly shows your level of care for this person. And uh, my concern would really be for them. I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. Okay? I, I think you need to have a come to Jesus talk with yourself and and figure some things out. Up next is Danito from New York. Ave, I got a good one. She's old school. Cooks, cleans, and works. We've been married a few years now. We have a kid. Her body blossomed from the pregnancy. She just doesn't know what to do with it. Her blowjobs are mediocre at best. I thought I'd be able to teach her. I thought after being married, she'd let her hair down some. Boy, was I wrong. Sex is so vanilla. I feel like I'm performing a task like cutting the lawn. Well, her sister came over from Italy for a week. My wife was at work and I was asleep. Man, I woke up to the best blowjob I've ever had. And she swallowed. We fucked twice that week. Ave, her sister is a freak. She introduced me to shit I've never done. Now I crave it all. Backdoor action, reverse 69. She sucked my cock backwards and ate my ass. I tried to talk my wife into doing some of this, but she refused. Now I'm truly wishing I married the other sister. I don't know if I can live an entire life without being fulfilled. Her sister gave me candy and I want it again and again. My wife's cousin talked about this show. What do your cards got for me? <laughs> it ain't what my cards got for you. What my cards got for the wife, which is a 1-800-divorce lawyer. Okay, let's, let's examine some of this. <sighs> You've been married. You're saying that the sex is mediocre. Again, you don't have to run to cheating. When things are not to what you think it should be, to the level of excitement that you think it should be, there are so many things, so many things that you can do to enhance. But you have to have the mind and, and the will to do so. There's 
so many sites. Adam and Eve. Uh, I believe there's something. Uh, pleasure. There's so many things you can go play for pleasure. You can go online and find even hell. Amazon got toys. You can find things to do to stimulate the bedroom instead of just talking about wanting to cheat or whatever. And this is so wrong. This is so wrong on so many levels. You're talking about the poor wife is at work and you and her sister are at the house getting it on. And you don't see nothing wrong with that. You're busy worrying about her blowjobs being mediocre but you and the sister in that house playing Twister and y'all don't, you see nothing wrong with that. And then listen to the things you said that the sister did. What I would like to know, if the sister was that at ease doing all that to you, eating out ass and everything, who else she do that to? You better get your ass down to the clinic and make sure you ain't got nothing. Because if she just, boom, came in there and did all this wonderful stuff to you, who else she doing all this wonderful stuff to? I'd want to check that out. And I'd want to check myself out. On top of that, just the fact that it is the sister. I don't think I'd ever would have admitted that. I would have never had the gall to come to somebody and tell them that. Some things you take to the grave with you, and this would have been one of them. I, I, I would have never come out and told nobody that. You, you honestly, and the way you came about it, you know, just cool as hell. You honestly see nothing wrong with that. But you can put your poor wife on blast for saying that her, her, her blowjobs are mediocre. Wow. Absolutely wow. Then you're talking about the sister introduced you to candy and you want it all the time. So the sister showed you this stuff. You tried to show the wife, but the wife, I guess, wasn't with it or I don't know. I don't know what her religious beliefs are. I, I don't know. But because she wasn't with it or whatever the case may be, now you're just you're talking about you wish you would have married the other sister. So uh, again, again, this perfect example of how everything pertains to sex. So to hell with love, let's just throw that out the door. Love to unpack this shit and and the quarter train, the midnight train to Georgia. Okay, forget love, it's gone. Everything is just about sex. Sex, sex, sex. Perhaps your wife wasn't with it because ding, ding, ding. Did it ever occur to you? Maybe your wife is like, wait a minute. Where's all this coming from? We've been married. Did he say five years, people? We've been married five years. Now, all of a sudden, this nigga talking about this, this, that, and the second. What? Where all this come from? And overnight like that, if you never tried to introduce her to those acts before, and suddenly, now here you are, look, let's do this, 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 and third. What? Where he get this from? You don't know what might be going through your wife's mind as to why she wasn't willing to even try or entertain any of it. Man, there's so much wrong with this email, it, it, with this situation that it, it's just not, it's just not right. First off, no, no to the sex with the sister. You don't broke all types of mar marriage vows with that. You don't broke all types of family vows or bonds with that. All types of trust, like you have just desecrated the marriage. Then you've got the nerve to talk about, oh, you should have married the sister. Your poor wife, my sympathies is with her. My sympathies is with her. Because this is a fucked up situation. Five years down the drain, because this here woman come from Italy, 
doing God knows what. You don't know how or who. She, she could be uh, uh, the whore Babylon over there. I'm not trying to be funny, but where did she get these skills from? Where, where did she learn this stuff from? How is it that she so easily, boom, just done all this stuff to you? And knowing that you're her sister's husband. So she has no remorse, no concern for her sister at all. And I said, there's so much wrong with this. It's just not even funny. The devil is all up in that house. That whole situation is just all fucked up. I'm telling you now, hopefully your wife won't come to me and ask for no advice. Because if she ever do, I'm going to tell her what my intuition see. And it's nothing nice, okay? It's nothing nice. You need some help, man. You need to really get yourself together. And if this is really how you feel, then get out of your wife's life. Let her go because there may be somebody in her in her um future that will love and respect and accept her as she is. And you need to go on out there and find you what whatever thing floats your boat. The first card says Conquer goals. And what that means is you you need to just what I said, you need to let her go and you need to go out there and find what it is. Find these things that you like. You said that you can't go a lifetime without the candy that the sister in introduced you to. So you need to go ahead and find that because those are your goals. That is what you hold more important, sex and sexual acts. And you need to go make yourself free so that you can live that type of lifestyle. Because that's not fair to be doing these things behind this woman's back and endangering her health for your foolishness. If that is what you really feel you need and you cannot uh, uh, go without it, then you need to do the right thing. Do the man thing. Go ahead and release this woman and let her live her life and you go do you. The next card says, someone's trying to ruin your reputation. Ooh, do you hear that? Someone's trying to ruin your reputation. Now, you and this woman have been married five years. And I just want everybody to take this walk with me. Suddenly, the white, the, the white sister come over for a vacation. You're on the couch sleeping. People, please paint this picture in your head. You're on the couch sleeping and you wake up to blow job. To the sister doing all types of acts, eating ass out of verse 69, you said, and all other kind of foolishness. Okay, okay. You and the, you and the wife been married five years. So the sister know that you're her sister's husband. Probably was at the wedding. So all this time, this sister been wanting to do this? Has the sister ever flirted with you? Have you ever flirted with her? What made her know that she could do this to you and you would be receptive of this? See, there's more to the story, okay? And that's what I, what I want the, uh, the listeners to hear. There's more to the story than what we, we're being um, told. There's more to the story here. Because I, I don't see nobody just off of GP just come downstairs, see you on that couch sleep. Tiptoe over there. Take your pants down or whatever and take you out and get to doing whatever. What's to say you wouldn't have slapped her? What's to say you wouldn't have called to all kind of whores? What's to say you wouldn't have thrown her out and threatened to tell her your wife? I'm just saying, what's to say that? What kind of headspace was this woman in when she did that? There's a lot more going on here. And I don't know if maybe that was the uh, uh, thing. Maybe she has it in for a sister. Maybe she wanted to ruin y'all uh, uh, wedding or whatever, ruin y'all marriage by doing this dirt. You understand? Maybe she figured 
that you would tell a wife or the wife will find out and boom, now y'all would be all talking about divorce or, or, or y'all marriage is all in shambles because guess what? Misery loves company. She ain't got no husband. She ain't got no husband. So when you look at all of this, you have to ask yourself some questions. Yeah, you're getting this blow job, but from the sister and what is the end game here? Like, because, I mean, honestly, how did she know that you were going to be down with that? That's not something that people just do every day. So there's a lot going on here. A lot that's not being said. And, uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. I think the poor wife needs out. She needs to be free because there's a lot of fucked upness going on. And, uh, it, I don't, I don't see where it's going to stop. I really don't. I don't feel it. Um, my cards are not telling me that. My spirit gods are not telling me that. Uh, what I'm getting is bullshit, and I'm calling bullshit. There's a more going on. I'm, I'm not even going to say this is you and the um, sister's first time hooking up. I'm getting a lot of murkiness in that area, and, and, and I do not believe that, that this is how it went down. I do not believe that. The third card says move beyond. And that's exactly what I'm saying. You need to man up, do the man thing, release your wife so she can go on and meet the, the uh, prizes that she has coming her way. And you need to go on and do what you're doing because I don't see where that's going to stop. And I don't see that it has stopped. So she doesn't deserve that. And if that's the life you want to live, that's fine. Because guess what? Again, everybody's life is their own. You are the master to your game. Your life is your game. It's your checkerboard game. And you are the master to that checkerboard. And if that's what you want to have in your life, you want this open sex, this wild sex, and the rest of that, that's fine. But release her so that you could go ahead and live the life. As long as you're not hurting anyone, you do you. But when you've taken marriage vows, that is hurting someone. So therefore, what you need to do is release yourself even for your own sake. Release yourself and go on and do what you want to do. And at the end of the day, nobody has nothing to say about that. Okay? Now, you wrote in, you asked me, and I told you what I saw, what I felt, what I was uh, receiving from my spirit gods. Take it and do what you will, but it, 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 it's, just, it, it's just so messed up. It really is. Up next is Sharon from Florida. My cousin and I have been fucking since we were teens. In fact, we were each other's first. Since then, I've had boyfriends, he's had girlfriends, but neither of us has been able to commit to any of them. The truth is, we want each other. We finally admitted it to one another last summer at the family barbecue, and we've been together ever since. We are doing it in secret, but we do feel that certain ones know or suspect. The thing is, we're tired of hiding. He moved in under the guise of roommates. We live together. We're in the same bed together every night. We're both of the same mind to reveal to the family. I know I've talked about sex in this email, but it's not just that. We love each other. We want to go to Mexico and get married. He says we should pull the band-aid off and tell everyone at the first barbecue summer. I kind of think we should elope then reveal. What can they do? They'll have to accept it or reject it. The deed will be done. What do you think? Whose idea is better? Does the card say anything as to the reveal? I'm not asking the cards for their permission to be with him. I'll do that regardless. I just want to know about the reveal. In any event, we won't be giving each other up. It's way past that. Well. I mean, enough said. What can I say? You, you've put it down. I mean, you said that. Uh, personally, I don't rally for the family thing. But 
if that's your thing, if that is what you want to do, and y'all both are in uh, uh, coots with that, and hey, who am I? You're both adults. And if that's what you guys want to do, that's fine. For me, again, it's hard now. But if that's what you want to do, that's what you do. And it's obviously from, I mean, like I said, there's really nothing I can say to any of this. Because you've already put, you don't put that foot down. No matter what anybody says, that's the end of the deal. Y'all going to be together, y'all doing the damn thing, and there it is. So it ain't nothing I can say about that. Now, as to the reveal, you did ask about that specifically, so I will address that. Again, it doesn't matter because y'all's already, you've already put that down. Y'all are going to be together. Y'all doing this damn thing, and who don't like it? Too bad. So, I mean, there it is. There it is. Uh, enough said. Like, either which way you guys do it, it's going to be done. And one thing you already know, that there is going to be some back back uh, lash. There's going to be people that are going to be very, very against this. A lot of people do not agree with, with uh, family getting together like that. And so, especially the older ones, there are going to be talk. There are going to be ones against it. So, now you have to ask yourself, do you want to deal with that talk head on? Or do you want to go ahead and do what y'all going to do and then just deal with the fall? Because either way, it's, it's going to be a fallout, okay? Either way. So it's just up to you which way you want to do it. And I'm not going to push you in any direction of which way to do it. Because again, personally, I don't agree with it. But if that's what you're going to do, that's what you're going to do. And you've already stated that. So the only advice I could give is whatever feels right to you is what you guys have to do. But do understand and realize, yes, there will be a fallout. So it just depends on which way you want to deal with it. The first card says creation, rebirth. And see with that, again, like I said, once, once you guys take that step, and that's where the rebirth come in. Once you guys take that step, y'all got to know, y'all got to know that there is going to be a fallout. Definitely. There's going to be a fallout. So you have to be prepared to handle that and deal with that, okay? I can't really say anything more about that. Now, the second card says job offer. Now, it doesn't mean employment. Understand that. Again, I've said it many times. These cards have different meanings. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, employment. But there's going to be some type of offer coming up. Something that's going to be a game changer. And I think that it's going to be very positive for you guys. I do feel that. I'm getting that heavily. It is going to be something very positive for you. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm actually getting it now that indeed, indeed, so I misspoke because I am, I am picking that up now. It is going to be a job offer. And not only that, it's going to be in another state. So I, I think that you need to take that in consideration. And I'll go even as far as to say the job offer is going to be for him. And it's something that he's already, had, he has knowledge of, but he didn't know he would get it. But it is going to come in his favor. So when you speak with him, let him know that you know about the job that's coming up. And it is going to go in his favor. So that right there, that is going to be the pinnacle of what you guys do. Because that job offer is in another state, okay? And as long as he accepts that, I'm seeing positivity. I am seeing positivity. So again, you guys have to do make those calls on your own. But there is something positive coming down the line. The last card says, always be aware. And with that, it's not a threatening. I don't, I don't feel any malice with that. Always be aware. 
is just telling you to be cautious because, again, as I spoke about that fallout, and that I'm picking up heavy. There is going to be fallout, and you guys got to be prepared for that. There's going to be a lot said, okay, a lot. And and some of it is going to be very uh, hurting your feelings. I'm just keeping it out there. You know, there, there's going to be a lot said. So I really, really cautious you guys. If this is really what you're going to do, be prepared because when you reveal, it's not going to be this happy joy, joy reveal. It's not. Okay. But there is that silver lining that there is that job offer coming and it is in another state. So you guys just have to prepare and do what you will with that. Okay. Again, you know, everybody has to do what they will in their life. As long as it's not hurting anyone else, it's not necessarily a bad thing, okay? And now it is time for our VIP Zodiac reading. These readings are based on the week that it's read. As energies change constantly, readings change. Our VIP Zodiac sign for this week is Pisces. Okay, Pisces, you guys are up. This week, your spirit animal is elephant. You know, elephants are very lucky, very lucky. You're in sync with... The sun. Your romantic aura. Your romantic aura is waiting. So you're waiting on someone. Okay. Your financial direction is follow up. So there's something that's happened between last week and this week. There's something that's happening. I don't know if it's a loan. Uh, it's not coming in clearly, but there's a loan, a job offer. But there's something financially that stems from last week to this week that you need to follow up on. Okay? You need to be cautious of sticky situations. Be cautious of sticky situations. And you need to embrace boss chick mode. So again, there's something coming up financially. I'm not sure if it's like your own, um, your own business or either some type of promotion. But that's what I'm getting, and that's I'm holding the boss chick mode card, and that that's what I'm getting. I'm getting some type of promotion or either advancing to your own business. So there's something really good coming up for you that way. Okay. And now, loves. Today's relationships tend to lead more towards sex than love. When someone comes on to you with sex, knowing you're in a relationship and family nonetheless, you have to examine the why. There's reasons to everything. You must remember everything glitters ain't gold. Sex. When does it replace love? When you're more concerned about getting off than the health of your partner, shame on you. Kink is cool as long as all parties are in agreement with the king. Live in your truth. Don't allow someone to turn you into something you're not. As an adult, no one can tell you who to love. If it's of blood relations, you will have to cross that moral bridge on your own. In the end, sex, love. Which means the most to you? And are you willing to bargain your soul for one or the other? With that said, 
if you have a bizarre situation or simply some drama and need to give voice to it, email me. And now I have some private sessions. I'm off to do an energy cleanse. See you guys next time. Guys, we're growing. We've changed the direction of the show to give you what you want, need, and desire. If you have a situation you don't want to discuss on the show, email me, marked private, and help. I cover all things from relationships to haunts. If you need help, you found it. Keep those emails coming. Hit that subscribe button and join the WCT fam.